Hello, everybody. Uh, this is I am Sporticus, and uh, going right at another s episode of the heavyweight tournament using Legends of Boxing PC game. The round of 128. Let's head to the ring and see who we got lined up for today. Up first, number 32 ranked Ken Norton. Is going to be taking on Francisco Damiani, Italian heavyweight. Norton, 42 and 7, and one draw, 33 knockouts out of San Diego, California. Taking on Francisco Damiani from Romini, Italy, 32 with 30 and 2 with 24 knockouts. Uh, by the Look of your cards, you can tell that uh, uh, should be a good fight. Uh, both fighters. Norton has above average power. Uh, Damiani's average. Both have decent chins. Uh, pretty even fight, except for defense. Norton's got the edge defensively. And both have special traits. Endurance uh, does go... Uh, favor uh, Ken Norton. Uh, Norton's specialty trait is uh, his chin is a 4 versus power 8 or better, but uh, Damiani is not uh, that uh, high, so it stays an 8. Damiani's chin is minus 2 at level 1 fatigue. So once he hits level 1 fatigue, his chin will go down to a 6. Or it goes down two. So let's head to the ring and see how Dort Norton uh, As I was saying, Norton uh, not a very uh, not a very good um, draw for him in his first fight in this tournament. Tough fighter, Francisco Damiani. Uh, inside for Norton, Damiani will start from the outside. Ken Norton comes out and tries to end this one early. Damiani covering up. And uh, that was probably one of the more dominating rounds of boxing we've had in this tournament. As Norton was wailing away. Uh, I get a will check here. Uh, nope. I must not have that set. Uh, but uh, Damiani's TKO of six. I thought that would have uh, brought up a will check, but uh, I must not have that checked in the root options, I'm guessing. Uh, it's not on here, I don't think. It's on the. But again, Norton just punished Damiani there in round one. Now both fighters going to the inside.
again, Norton controls the action and landed some very nice combinations. Damiani seems clueless out there in the first two rounds as Norton has been in control from the start of this fight. We head to round three, both fighters again on the inside. Norton used a lot of energy in those first two rounds and this round he kind of just uh, took a breather and just kind of laid on Damiani. Damiani landed a couple grazing shots in that round. Fairly even though. We head to round four and now Norton that energy he saved in round three is going to bring to the fold here in Round four, as he goes into pressure mode, Damiani on the inside. Good exchange for these two fighters. Oh, gets jacked on the dog head, but eats the punch. There's a lead left hook. Sweet overhand, Brian. A good action round there as Damiani started to come alive. He landed a couple very nice uppercuts early in the round. And Norton answered late, but uh, I would give that round to Damiani. We head to round five. Norton goes to the outside inside for Damiani. So, Ken Norton comes back with a solid fifth round, landed a, some nice jabs in there and set up a big hook to Damiani late in the round, but the combination from Damiano at the end of the round brought that one to a pretty even conclusion. Could have been anybody's round there. We head to round six, but Damiana's got some work to do after his first two rounds where he was just lit up by Norton, and he's got a lot of ground to make up. We head to round six, Norton on the outside, Damiani trying to get to the inside.
Good round for Francesco Damiani as Norton is not the as aggressive as he hit, was in the first couple rounds of this fight. Damiani starting to turn the tables. We head to round seven and Norton feels like his uh, momentum is slipping. He's going to go into pressure mode and Damiano on the inside. Damiano is in level one fatigue, so Norton's got a good chance here as uh, Damiani's chin drops to minus six at that minus two. So here we go, round seven. Damiano's hurting. Uh, Damiani. Norton up at nine. Wow. What a turn of events. Norton landed two straight, straight left hands that, uh, or straight right hands, and Damiano was hurt. But out of nowhere, the quick combination caught Norman on, Norton on the chin and put him on the canvas as he slipped to a knee. He waited until the last second to get back up, and then another combination, and he had Norton out on his feet. But the bell saved Norton there. Oh my gosh, what a round. That might be the round of the tournament so far. Damiani with a sudden knockdown of Ken Norton. We got ourselves a fight now. We head to round eight. Norton's in trouble. Norton is in trouble. He's back in pressure mode and Damiani on the ins Damiani on the inside. So Norton wasn't quite as aggressive, but he did get a TKO point put on Damiani. And that gives Damiani seven. His rating is a six, so as he tires here, this could be a trouble area for him if he gets uh lets Norton get loose as a CTN is crawling up and up. That means he's not going to be quite as active. So we head to round nine. Let's see what the ringside judge says. Oh, he's still got Norton up pretty good. I thought uh, it would be closer than that. But that's not saying what the official judges will have. Norton's going to go back into pressure mode. And Damiani on the inside.
So a big round for Norton as he landed a couple straight right hands there at the end, tail end of the round to really distance himself from Damiani there. So Norton trying to get back in control of this fight. And that might be the start of it as Damiani is just gassed out there. See, he just hit the... Level 4 fatigue. Round 10. Norton to the outside this time and inside for Damiani. So, as we see, I have uh, only one sound effect for the fouls, which is the rabbit punch, but uh, Damiani just pretty much lost his chances at winning any kind of uh, round there. With a, He got a point deduction for his uh, uh, assess, or, um, uh, excessive uh, rabbit punching there. Or whatever other foul you want, <laughs> low blow, low blows. Uh, I got to find some more uh, sound effects for that. Uh, and uh, Norton had him close to a TKO. The ref, after Damiani hit, uh, fouled there, he did nothing the rest of the round pretty much. And J Norton had him on the ropes. It looked like the referee might stop it, but uh, he did not. We head to round 11. This one looks like it might go the distance. Norton, though, has built the momentum his to his side now, and he's pretty much got this fight in control. Even though he's been knocked down in the fight, he has those first two rounds. He built up a little bit of a pretty good lead. They got him up 96-91 through 10. And he did have that first round. It was a 10-8 round, even though he didn't knock Namiani down. He he almost had it stopped early. Round 11. Both fighters going to the outside. Norton kind of just took the round off there and let Damiani have his way, but Damiani really couldn't do much. He was, he is exhausted out there. He did land a couple of uh, good shots. Nice combination and an uppercut that tagged Norton early, but uh, who knows how the judges will see it. We head to the final round, 12th and final round. This is uh, going to be an interesting ending here. Norton goes to pressure mode, and Damiani to the outside.
Norton finishes strong here in the 12th and final round as he opened up a deep cut under the left eye of Damiani and that probably wouldn't have had the fight go on much longer after that if it would have went more rounds but uh, Norton solid finish and that easily should have won him the fight let's see what the official results say here it is unanimous 114 111 114 111 and 117 110 for the winner by unanimous decision Ken Norton so Norton advances to the next round he did go down in this fight Damiani caught him with a big combination surprised him almost and Norton went to a knee uh, counts as a knockdown and but Norton dominated most of the other uh, parts of the fight. Da Damiani did have a a few rounds here where he was in pretty good shape. But uh, as you see, punch points, Norton. I would probably agree more with Judge 1 and 2 as far as score goes. Judge 3 had it 117-110. But I thought Damiani in the middle rounds was uh, was much better. But uh, you can tell by the TKO points who was the more active fighter. Norton inflicted 10 TKO points. Damiani only 4. So there you have it. Damiani put up a fight but uh, wasn't as... Uh, probably wasn't as uh, much of a challenge for Norton... But he did go down in the fight, so. But he did uh, dominate the action most of the way. So we go to fight number two. Emerald Davison. Uh, out of Detroit, Michigan. 36 wins, 6 losses, 25 knockouts. Against Eric Butterbean Esch. 77 wins, 10 losses, 4 draws, 58 knockouts out of Jasper, Alabama. This should be, uh, unless Butterbean can land a, uh, unless Butterbean can answer, uh, land a big uh, right hand in the first couple rounds, because his power will drop minus four after the second round as he gets tired. I'm surprised uh, Butterbean's endurance is that high. So let's go right to the ring and see what happens with this one. I can't imagine Eric Butterbean Esch going 12 rounds. Let's see though. Let's get ready to rumble. Round one, both fighters open on the outside. So Butterbean comes out flailing, lands a sloppy overhand right, but Davison, Davison's chin withstood it. We head to round two. Davison goes to the inside. Esh from the outside.
Big round for Davison as he punishes on the inside. Esch couldn't really get his arms extended there. And uh, Davison controlled the round. Esch power drops to a four after the second round. So he's extended most of his energy. Uh, Expended most of his energy. Davison stays on the inside. Ash to the outside. Round three. Oh, there's a step in right hand. Oh, that left hand. Just missed that lunge and left hook. Did you see how close that was? Right hand scores. So Davison again landed a nice uppercut midway through the round and Esch again could not really get his hands free to throw any of those wild punches he likes to throw. That might be the secret for Davison to stay on the in, try to stay on the inside. Uh, Davison does stay on the inside and now but Ash feels things slipping away from him as he goes to pressure mode. Eric Esch landed a huge hook in that round that hurt Davison, but not hurt enough as another uppercut landed and Davison pushed through to get through the round. So Esch's best round probably of the fight. We head to round five. Davison goes to the outside. Ash to the inside. Pretty even round there as Esch was able to uh, land a nice uppercut midway through the round. That was probably the best punch of the round. But uh, it's too close to call as far as score wise. We head to round six. Davison stays on the outside, Esch on the inside. Two jabs and goes downstairs to the midsection. 
I don't know where Ash is finding the energy here as he's landed a couple big shots here in round six. And at Davison. Losing a little bit of his momentum. But now, both fighters hit level one fatigue. Butterbean's power down to a one now. So he's lost all, all but a little bit of his uh, scariness. <laughs> he's just a big beanbag out there now. Let's see what the ringside judges have through six. And they've got Davison only up by one. 58-57. Davison on the outside. Ash to the inside. Here we go. Davison just cannot shake Butterbean as Butterbean with a nasty body shot that uh, you can see Davison went uh, flinch on that shot. We head to round eight. Davison goes to pressure mode. Butterbean stays on the inside. Davison could not land as much as he thought he should here with being in pressure mode. As it was pretty quiet round. Slight edge probably to Davison. He did land a couple. Nice combination and a big hook. But uh, now it's Butterbean's turn to go with pressure mode, and Davison will go to the outside here in round nine. Butterbean put the pressure on there in the last half of that round. And Davison. This would be a pretty big upset if Davison loses to Butterbean. I'm trying to remember who the biggest fighter Butterbean fought. I thought he fought Larry Holmes in Larry Holmes' later years. But I can't remember for sure. I sh should have looked him up. I want to see how many times he went the distance in a fight. He's going into round 10 here, and Davison goes to pressure mode. Butterbean 
Goes to the outside. Davison's in trouble here. Nice round for Emerald Davison. As he came and did a butter bean as he finished strong in that final minute of the round. That probably gave him the round. We head to round 11. Let's see what the ringside judge has. Still Davison 96 95. It's gonna be this is gonna be a close one, and this is not what Davison was hoping for. Butterbean, level four fatigue, his chin goes down to a six. Uh, Davison's chin is at a four. We head. To the lot lot. 11th round here. Nice double hook. So another big round from Davison as he's starting to get his momentum going. As he heads into the 12th and final round, hopefully he has built on his lead, slight lead. Butterbean is gassed. Don't think he's ever went 12 rounds in a fight. I'm, I'm pretty safe in guessing that. Davison will go to the inside. Butterbean. It's got to go pressure mode here, I would imagine. Here we go. Both these guys trading weak punches there at the end. And it's all over. And Butterbean has just got to be happy that he made it through 12 rounds. We head to the judges. I see Davison with a slight decision here. But uh, let's see what they have to say. Judge one sees it 116, 114 Davison, 115, 113 Davison, and 115, 114 Ash. The winner by split decision, Emberl Davison. Emberl Davison wins it. Butterbean fought a valiant fight, but he goes home a loser. Punch point definitely an uh, advantage for Davison. Trying to see where the differences were here in round or Judge Three's card here. Let's 
seems like when they yanged, he yanged on some of these calls. Like, these two saw it for Esch. He saw it for Davison. He saw it for Esch. The other two saw it for Davison. Pretty close fight, though. Surprisingly, uh, I'm, one of the things I'm going to have to do is look up Esch and see who he fought. Uh, the bigger name fighters he fought. And uh, how many times he actually went the distance in a fight. Up next, it's going to be Wayne Bethea, 28-18-4 with 11 knockouts. Not a lot of power from New York, New York. He's got an endurance of 18 going against Hasim Rahman from Baltimore, Maryland. 50 wins, 9 losses, 2 draws, 41 knockouts. He's got a decent right hand. He will have the slight edge. His endurance is slightly less, but uh, Rahman's got that uh, one-punch knockout. He's known to... Uh, his biggest uh, victory, of course, was against uh, Lennox Lewis. Knocked Lewis out for the title. Bethea, not a great record, but he's a solid... Heavyweight. Let's head to the ring. Good chin from Bethea. Big round for Bethea as he comes out strong. Lands some good shots on Rahman. A good start for Wayne Bethea. Now Bethea goes to the inside and Rahman goes to the elusive mode. So Bethea, despite Rahman being in, staying on the outside, was able to tag Beth, uh, Rahman with a couple of good shots here towards the end of the round. So a good start for Wayne Bethea here in the first two rounds. And now both fighters go to the inside. Round three. Rockman comes out in round three and starts to instill his will on Bethea. Comes right out with a couple big crosses, a hook to the body, and then an uppercut. Had Bethea reeling.
Let's see if that's the beginning right there of Rahman taking over this fight. We head to round four. Neither fighter was able to really uh, take control of that round. Bethea, though, was much more uh, impressive than the, than the previous round defensively. We head to round five. Inside for Bethea, Ross Rahman goes to the outside. Not a lot happened in that round. Uh, but Thea did uh, develop some uh, a cut. Or a nosebleed, I'm sorry. I think it was a nosebleed. We head to round six. Nobody has really taken total control of this fight. Bethea started out like he was going to. And Rahman had one good round. We head to round six. Fairly even round as both fighters each had their own shots. The best punch of the round was probably Bethea's uppercut that caught Ramin Flush. Raman, I can't pronounce his name correctly. Uh, but nothing else stood out really. We head to round seven. Both fighters go to the outside. Nice round for Wayne Bethea. Rockmont is unable to, has not really landed any power shots in this fight as Bethea 
has been a much more aggressive fighter for the most part. We head to round eight. Both fighters on the outside. Wade Bethea lands a terrific hook that caught Rotman flush and that made Rotman's knees buckle but the bell sounds and uh, uh, Bethea could not act on that but a good round from Wade Bethea as we got ourselves a slight little upset co going right now Bethea seems to be in pretty good control through eight rounds. Let's check the ringside judge. And they actually got Rockman. But I think, in my opinion, Bethea has a slight edge. Both fighters go to the outside. A quiet round with some more uh, some more blood appearing uh, as Wayne Bethea's face is starting to show the even though it's he might have a slight lead in this fight his face shows that uh, he's taking more punishment as he develops a, there's a, a accidental headbutt and whoops that's not what i wanted i want to look at the report and uh he developed uh, some uh a cut above his, a minor cut above his right eye so we head to round 10. both fighters again on the outside Even round as both fighters square off, each landing their uh, punches, both fighters landing big hooks in that round, but neither taking the edge over the other. We head to round 11. This fight is anybody's call, really. I think the ringside judge has but Rahman. They got Rahman up three points, but I don't think it's that much of a difference. Rahman goes to pressure mode. Bethea stays on the outside. Stop, 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 stop. And oh, rabbit punch. 
Again, even in pressure mode, Ramon has no energy to really to expend as he uh, gets tagged there by a big uppercut from Bethea. But the problem there was Bethea gets uh, a point deducted for his co consistent fouls. And that's going to hurt him big time. We head to the 12th and final round. It's hard telling who's got this fight. The ringside judge has Rotman up comfortably. But Bethea, Bethea's corner seems uh, to think that it's not that uh, uh, distant of a score here. Here comes Rahman going to Elusive Mode. He thinks he's got the fight won. He's just going to try to stay away from Bethea. Bethea goes to the outside. Here in the 12th. Unbelievable. He's up at 8. Can Rahman finish him? Not a great finisher. It's all over. That knockdown probably won Rahman the fight. But they, uh, I'll be curious to see what the score would have been. Let's go to the official result. It's unanimous. 115-111. 117-109. 117. It wasn't as close as I thought it was going to be. Rockman wins a pretty unanimous, unanimous decision. So even if it would have been 10-9, it would have been not even close. So Rockman had this fight in control and lands a huge cross there in the 12th and final round that put Bethea down. That was the punch. Rockman would waver. I don't think he landed any other power shot in the fight. That was the only one. Bethea landed one in the 8th that had Rockman hurt. So there you have it. Rahman advances with a unanimous decision victory over Wayne Bethea. Up next, Larry Holmes, the eighth ranked fighter in the game, taking on George Chaplin. Chaplin uh, had a pretty impressive victory in his first fight. Holmes, 69 wins, six losses. 44 knockouts out of Eastern Pennsylvania. He has the edge in almost every category. Uh, defensively, though, Chaplin matches him, so it could be a good defensive battle. Uh, Chin-wise, though, Holmes has a big edge there. Chaplin is susceptible. He's 23-9 with two draws, 10 knockouts out of Baltimore, Maryland. He has the only one with the trait, uh, specialty trait. His chin is plus two after the first knockdown. So if he gets knocked down, his chin will go up to six. Endurance-wise, Holmes has the edge there. Both these guys will fight from elusive mode. This should be a good, uh, interesting fight. Let's go ahead and fight it. Uh, I was going to try to stop it right there, but I really was am interested in this fight. Let's head to the ring. George Chaplin squared off against Larry Holmes. Both fighters start from the outside.
Nice straight right from Holmes there at the end of that round. But uh, Chaplin did a good job. Both fighters just filling each other out here in this first round. Trying to get a uh, sense of their defensive tendencies. We go to round two. Holmes goes back to the outside. Chaplin going to pressure mode. Nice round for both fighters. Holmes landed a big uh, power shot midway through the round that had Chaplin look like he was hurt, but Chaplin finishes strong with a big combination there at the end of the round. Chaplin's not backing down from Larry Holmes. We head to round three. Holmes goes to the outside. Chaplin elusive mode. Down goes Chaplin. Chaplin caught with a straight right hand. He's hurt. He is hurt. He gets up at six. I don't think there's enough time in the round for Holmes. That's it. The round is over. Another big combination. Chaplin was ready to go down again. But the bell sounds. Big round for Larry Holmes. Chaplin's chin, though, goes up to a six as he has the trait of plus two after the first knockdown. We head to round four, both fighters on the outside. Holmes, just a master out there defensively as he is making Chaplin look silly. And then lands that straight right hand that had Chaplin hurt once again. Total domination so far by Larry Holmes in this fight. We head to round five. Look at the difference in uh, endurance. Holmes fresh as a daisy. Chaplin struggling here. As we head to round five, both fighters on the outside.
Holmes, another solid round for him. Chapman is unable to solve the Larry Holmes uh, defensive stylings yet. We head to round six. And Chaplin goes back to elusive mode. And Holmes from the outside. Both fighters trading shots here at the end of the round, but it was Larry Holmes with that huge straight right to start the round, and then the combination, and uh, Chaplin just couldn't, still cannot serve, uh, figure out Holmes, as Holmes just making him look, uh, I don't know, he's just making him look silly out there. He cannot seem to connect with anything solid as Holmes seems quicker, much quicker than Chaplin. We head to round seven. Ch Chaplin on the outside, uh, elusive again. Chaplin finally able to land a solid shot with the big hook, but uh, Holmes did not seem to be phased by it at all as the bell sounds as he smiles at Chaplin as he walks back to his corner. Definitely the best fight, punch for Chaplin this fight. We head to round eight. And again, Chaplin goes to elusive mode. Holmes on the outside. Straight right. Clocks Chaplin, he's down for the second time. He's up at nine. Ken Holmes finish here in the eighth. He cannot finish, but Chaplin is very hurt. The straight right, straight right hand from Holmes did it again, and then the fierce combination, and it looked like Chaplin was done, but Holmes cannot finish, and the bell sounds. We head to round nine. Chaplin now has been down twice in this fight. Both fighters go to the outside. Just missed that lunge you left hook. Did you see how close that was? Oh, 
Holmes continues as he uses his jab <clears throat> expertly against Chaplin there in that round and opened up a cut on Chaplin's lip. We head to round 10. Chaplin back to elusive mode. Holmes on the outside. again. Chaplin's down here in the third, or in the tenth, for the third time. Will he get up? He's struggling. He gets to his feet, barely at the count of nine. <clears throat> That's it. The referee's going to wave it off. A TKO victory here in round ten for Larry Holmes. Impressive victory for Holmes against a tough, tough competitor in George Chaplin. And Chaplin, still a little groggy. Impressive victory. Look at that. Point, punch points. Holmes was dominant from opening bell till the referee waved it off in the 10th. Again, the winner at 49 seconds of round 10, Larry Holmes. Holmes advances with an impressive, impressive victory. That might be the most dominant uh, fight we've seen from any fighter so far in this tournament. An impressive win for Larry Holmes, the eighth ranked fighter in the heavyweight division. So... We'll stop it right there, but here's some of the fights we're looking at. Number four, we'll see Mike Tyson for the first time, and he's got a, a pretty tough uh, opponent in Frank Bruno, who's got some pretty dang good power himself. Then we got Joe Bugner taking on Juan Pierre Koopman. We need to get a picture of him. Danny Wolford against Chuck Wepner. And then Lennox Lewis taking on Bernardo Mercado. That should be a slugfest. So that's it from here. Thanks for watching. And we will see you for the next uh, series of fights.